Okay, so here's just a random circuit board, and I'm just going to show you how to check uh, electrolytic capacitors, electrolytic only capacitors, in the circuit using a standard multimeter without capacitance uh, capability. So electrolytic caps are these here, these large, tall can parts, these here, all these, and I'm going to show you how to check them here. Okay, so here I have just a standard multimeter. It does not have capacitance capability of checking circuits. What we're going to use is the ohms setting. And we're just going to look across the capacitors in the circuit and look for a certain characteristic. So I am also going to show you how to check if you have a meter that does have capacitance capability. that will have this little symbol here. But first I'm going to show you with the standard multimeter because you may not have a capacitance type meter okay so something else to consider when you're looking for a bad capacitor on a circuit card is you're looking for any of them to have any bulging or any leaking out of them so you look at them all see if they're they're not bulged out they're not leaking any substance because those are definitely bad and you'll need to replace them so let's just say we're going to look at C10 and C12 in the circuit, measure them in the circuit. Um, they don't have any bulging on them, but um, we're still going to check them in the circuit and see if they measure adequately. Okay. Another thing we're going to do is pay, pay respect to polarity. This is the negative side on this one and the positive side on this one. The gray denotes the negative on this cap, and the other side will be the positive. So I'm going to flip it over and we'll measure them in the circuit. Okay, so I'm going to flip the board over now. And here's C10 and C12. Here's C10, here's C12. And I mark the negative, the black, on this side of the board for C10 and for C12. So now I'm just going to measure. I've got the meter just on ohm capability because it doesn't have capable of reading capacitance. And what you can do is you just... Probe this cross C10, and you'll see the meter is moving, it's charging the capacitor. So that's probably a good capacitor. And then I'm going to do the same thing on C12. It's also charging in the circuit. So that probably means it's a good 80% chance, 80-90% chance that those capacitors are good. So what you can do is go through the whole circuit and look for some capacitors that aren't charging when you're when you're probing it because that means it's probably opened up or even shorted and it'll give you just a steady just a steady measurement like this okay so here's a meter that does have capacitance measure capable has this little symbol right here and i've got it set to that now I'm going to do the same thing in circuit. Now, checking capacitor or any component in a circuit is not the optimum way of doing this, but we're just trying to do this so we can find something relatively quick without having to pull them all out and measure every one of them. So this one, again, I'm going to do black on the negative side of C10 and the red on the positive. So the meter pauses for a little bit. Charging's checking the capacitor says it's 650 microfarad. So it, it, it pretty much knows there's a capacitor of some sort. There could be a couple of them in parallel, but it's looking like it's capacitive. So now I'm going to do the same thing to C12. Pauses for a little bit. Then it says it's 99 microfarad, so it's basically a 100 microfarad cap. So if you do have to replace the capacitor, you have to make sure that you uh, replace it with the same voltage or higher voltage. This is 6.3 volt. Or the same value. This is set 470 microfarads. Or uh, you can be higher. Um, usually if the voltage is higher and the capacitance is higher, the component is larger and it may not fit into what you want it to fit into. 
but it's okay to go greater on both of those. And then it's also very important that you get the positive and negative. This is the negative and the side of the positive. Make sure you get them soldered in correctly because it can, it can blow up or just not work or both. So very important to make sure you get that right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to replace a capacitor. There's a couple different ways of doing it. The poor man's method I'll show you first, which is probably what you're going to have to do because you probably don't have solder wick. And I'll show you how to do it with solder wick. But let's say we're going to do C4 here. So I'm going to flip the board over, keep my finger on it. So then C4, where's C4? C4 is right here. So I'm going to, I've got my hand on the other side. I'm going to heat up one side of it and kind of wiggle the part and heat the other side up, kind of shift it over to the other side, making sure the solder's flowing, and then just go back and forth in them. And then it just came out, came out in my hand here. So that is one way of doing it. And then you just replace it. Remember, you replace it with the same value and voltage and then um, make sure you get the orientation right. And now I'll show you the other way. So now here's you, the better way of doing it, um, especially if you want to save the component or not damage it when you're taking it out. So let's say we want to replace C7. I'm going to flip it over. And C7 is right here. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to take out C7. Now I've already lost its location. So let me see if I can find it. Okay, so it's right here. So I have the solder wick, and I'm just going to desolder both sides. See how the solder is sucked up into the wick? Do both sides. Sometimes you have to add solder to do this. So now, solder's removed. So now I'm going to just take some tweezers and break the leads loose. They're both brick. I can bend them now without them being soldered in. And then I can pull the component out without damaging it, just in case I want to put it back in. So that's the, the better way of doing it if you have either a solder wick or a solder sucking tool. So here's some additional information. So now we do have the capacitor out of the circuit, and we can measure it two ways. One is with uh, using the ohms on a non-capacitive meter and we're just going to turn it on and you're going to see it charging up again and then it'll go off scale and pretty much uh but that's showing you it is capacitive is still there now we don't know the correct value so we're going to actually use a capacitance meter to read that so now we're going to measure the capacitance with an actual capacitance meter so i'm going to put it over to capacitance Push this button to get it in capacitive mode. It's going to take a few seconds, and it says it's 37.5 microfarads, and it is a 33 microfarad cap. So this cap is definitely good. 